Good, okay. Yeah. All right, it's uh, 6.03. We'll call the meeting together of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, <coughs> it'll be June 20th, 2024. 18. No. Oh, oh, 18th, yeah, 18th. That's June 20th is the minutes. But, uh, yeah, the meeting is July 18th, 2024. And we do have a quorum. So we have an agenda. And uh, first thing on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. And uh, I guess I'll take a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. Second. Okay. Discussion? And, and that is the minutes of June 20th, 24 meeting. Yes. Yes. Okay. Those two are the only two that can vote. Yeah, well, see, I don't. I think you have to have three. Okay, I, I'd like to make a motion to move the the minutes approval to Wednesday, the twenty fourth, when we all meet for our training. Mm -hmm. Will you be here, Mr. Duke, the twenty yes. fourth? Can we just move the approval of these minutes to uh, Wednesday, July the twenty fourth, where three members will be present? I don't know if we can approve it and not be a part of an official meeting. Oh, okay. Let's see, but the other question I had is the things because I wasn't part of this, but. Are any of these things being held up? Because according to Dennis, until the minutes are approved, it's not an official that anybody can proceed with what was approved in here. Do you know if it's holding anybody up? Because I wouldn't want to wait for another month. No, I don't think there's anything on there that it's, anybody's oh. going to do tomorrow or anything. So. But you won't have another meeting until next month, though. Mm -hmm. If we do have Unless you do a special called meeting. Have they? Yeah, we could always have a special call if somebody needed to. Office. So and why not make a special know. call while we have the training because we're being paid there anyway? They haven't contacted we us could. about but um, I was of the opinion. I was of the, the opinion Kurt, when we met that they, they were kindly in a rush trying to get well, some things look moving. Well, they important. You've got the, the fire department and you've got the, ki the kennel. Yeah, so, I mean, those are pretty important things. So anyway, I guess um, I to tell you the truth, I don't have a problem in voting for them. I don't because, either. I mean, I don't either, you know. And uh, but I just want to be legal and get them stamped. And yeah, well, you do have a problem voting for them. I'm not allowed to. I wasn't at the meeting, I know. so therefore I, we don't I have a forum to vote I trust the two on. people that were here yeah. that they did the right thing and that they are correct. Well, we can so. let Dennis check and see if they can vote Wednesday. And if they can't, then the next meeting or. Okay. Well, if, you want, if you want to, it's up to you. You can make that motion and we can. Would it, uh, would it be proper for us to go ahead and approve these minutes at this point in time with the understanding it'll be checked out that it's legal and lawful. And but Dennis would agree with it. Provided. Yeah. And if we can come back, if we have to come back later and approve, we can, right? That's a good suggestion. And then if, if, if we just arbitrarily, well, let's just hold up on this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we, we could be having a negative effect on some of this. I agree. So let's try. Why don't okay. we try to... Okay. All right. All in favor of approving the uh, minutes from the June 20th uh, Board of Zoning Appeals meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, passes 5-0. The next thing is the uh, approval of the agenda that we have before us. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Okay. Second. Mo okay, motion second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, passes five to zero. Okay, we're to the public comments. Uh, we have three issues on our agenda, and uh, we'll actually, if you are here to address one of those items will take your comments at that time but if there are any other public comments outside the current agenda of the boarding of zone appeals i guess we'll entertain those at this time is there anybody here that's for something else from the norton branch yeah They want you to speak into the microphone, right. and you might want to bend it down. I think. All right. My name is Janon Robinson. I, I live on Gosberg Road. Um, I am also the leader of the Beach Grove Community Group. 
Um, the question was put out regarding this zoning exemption and a vast majority of our community spoke out against it. There was a lot of different reasons. Um, some of them being the type of venue, uh, some of them being the, the roadway that it is on. Um, the roadway does present a problem being as how it's a very, very narrow strip to get onto Norton Branch from Gosford. I myself have actually been the first person to be at the scene of two wrecks on Gosford in the last two months. Um, Gosford just has um, a lot of traffic there and the specific spot where you turn onto Norton's Branch, honestly, it has low visibility and um, it's just a dangerous roadway. You cannot have two people passing at the same time. My fear is putting uh, additional individuals, you know, a, a venue of any sort of quantity uh, could become dangerous for the roadway. Um, additionally, I don't know that the space that is actually there um, has the means to park as many vehicles, you know, so that is a concern. Um, my biggest concern, um, the gentleman says that it is for a children's birthday venue. However, the application doesn't suggest that. It just says a party venue. And so my concern is that although I love birth, I, I love children and I love birthdays and I have no issue with, you know, the gentleman in question, um, the applicant. However, my concern is that it may not be a children's venue. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I feel that the concern would be getting this exemption, it is for a party venue. And that doesn't put any specifications or, or restrictions on what it could be. Um, so that is my concern and I'm just speaking again for the vast majority of my neighbors um, because there were a lot of different concerns. So I appreciate you guys uh, thinking it over and for this time I would ask that you do not approve it. Question. Yeah. Uh, the Gosberg Road we're speaking of is actually State Road 64. Is, is that correct? Is, that's correct. Okay. Yep. And Norton's Branch, um, in order to get to Norton's Branch, you take an immediate right from Highway 64, 41 to 64, you take a right, and it goes within 15, 20 feet. It is a one lane uh, bridge, and it's not well maintained. Um, I think that there had been some question about replacing that bridge in the future uh, at one of the meetings um, for roadways and stuff. So. It is a concern, you know, um, anyways, the, the bridge that you'd have to pass over. So, did you have any other questions about that? No, but well, I have one. Is the uh, applicant present? Right here. Okay, would you like to address these issues? Yeah. Uh, they could come up. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Can you state your name? And yes, sir. Yes, my name is Julian Avila, and I want to say hi to everybody. Um, originally, there was an accident almost an accident that happened on a bridge right in front of my property. I talked to one of the state troopers and because I was the one who put a pole in there trying to prevent something even worse to happen, we see a lot of uh, big trucks, more than 18 wheelers driving by and uh, I'm sure that's what damaged the, the bridge. He stated that they are still waiting to, to fix that bridge. It, it's under the list. Not that one, but the one in, in the corner that turned into Branch Road. And this uh, bridge you're speaking of is a county road. It's a county C box. Bridge. Yeah, yes, yes well, it's a it's an old C box bridge. Yeah. And it has a lip on it about like that because my buses go across it. Mm -hmm. So he said it's on the list and it sh it's been on the list for two years, so it should be repaired anytime. Yeah. And uh, as you know about what you're saying about the traffic, yes, that's true. We have, uh, but. I myself almost got, almost got into an accident there. Someone was speeding. And so you have to drive very slowly. But um, when, when we thought about this idea, this is just an idea. I'm not even requesting to reach zoning. This is an exception, if possible. You know, I'm not here to uh, go against anybody's will and try to make uncomfortable anybody. Uh, all, I, all I'm trying to do is just follow the steps you know, and ask the question, that's all. If we can, that's fine. If we cannot, I totally understand. Um, this this was, uh, before, this was a business. It was a body shop um, some time ago before we purchased the property. It's about 18 to 2,000 square feet uh, detached garage. That the property is surrounded by a creek. It's, it's a beautiful property. 
And we do, you have, do you live on this property? I live in the property, yeah. I live in the property. So me and my wife, we thought about this idea of having kids, you know, playing there. Why kids? Because we don't want to have parties where we live. We don't want to have venues or, you know, selling alcohol or any, any sort of things like that because we live in the property. So we thought of this idea so kids can enjoy the property as well on a certain days because we don't have time for this the whole time, full time. We got jobs, we got kids, we got family, and it's just a permit when we get the chance on weekends and during day times, and no more than 50 people, if it's less than, it's okay. We just want to have some sort of um, income coming from this property of a place that is not being used, which is 2,000 square feet, you know, garage. That's How many all. acres is in this parcel? Three of acres. Three. Three acres. Do you run buses up and down that north track? I go halfway up it and turn around and come back down. Terrell any, does. Any problems? It, I, if you meet me coming down the road, you have to get off. I mean, one of us has to stop. There's no flow of traffic for a school bus and a car down. The, and I don't know if you can pull up Google Maps. Can you, can you go to Google Maps to where you can pull up, you know, hey, you scroll down Norton's Branch. Benton has done a lot of work putting shot rock and stuff down the sides of the road to hold the road. Benton? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I did some research today on it. And the, the bridge that's been there, it probably predates me. It's probably 60 years old at least. It is a, it's like my little road and road. It's, I call them little pig pass. It's a beautiful countryside, but it's very narrow road. Uh, and Benton's bank, and you have a creek on right hand side and then I think the creek crosses is on the left hand side when you get closer to his property. Mm -hmm. And there's erosion and stuff where the road Benton's had to put the rubble rock or whatever the big rock is down to hold the banks up. More traffic's gonna create more issue though. Yeah, yes it will and, and you'll have, I mean, even if it's a birthday venue, you're gonna have people in the creek eventually. Mm -hmm. So your plans are to use this garage right. for children type parties right correct are there going to be children outside of the garage that you're using like for playgrounds or because you're mentioning a creek and i'm thinking mm -hmm. safety of children getting in the creek mm -hmm, right. not that that concerns anything i'm just thinking about that right mainly because this is our house we like our privacy and we would like uh, as a primary just maintain that area for the kids where the garage is but it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop them to walk around the area. We have sheep, we have chickens, and we would like to bring a pony for pictures and for them to play. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop them, you know, from mm -hmm. walking around the property. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay. Do you think we have sufficient information to? Vote on this. What was what did Kurt have provide a, a recommendation? Uh, recommendation. He thought he'd let you guys look at the oh. facts and. Okay, well that's fine. I mean, I just yeah. wonder if he had, sometimes he has one. Sometimes. If you had fifty people and three to a car, that would be roughly seventeen cars. Do you have the room to park? I mean, I, I I look the picture that they gave us is about what I saw off Google. Right. The eight twenty six by Google shows it in the woods over here. Right. Your your address is eight hundred maybe. Are you 800 Norton Branch? Uh, 826. Okay. 826. There is a space. And, and this idea came out of my, my son. He's five years old. He turned five, and we did a birthday party for him. Mm -hmm. So we invited family from Georgia, because that's where I used to live uh, seven years ago, and family from here. And we had about uh, close to 50 to 60 people. And, uh, you know, everybody parked pretty fine on the, behind the, the the venue. That's for us. No, because yeah. there's if you park on the road, you're going to yeah. hold up traffic. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. that that would be a, a, a it would be way inside the property, right behind the, the detached garage. How many uh, of these occasions do you annually think you might be? To in? be honest with you, like I say, I work full time. My wife does. We work from home, but I'm, I'm thinking this is not something that's going to start right away. This is something that eventually, because we have to invest into adapting the place, you know, uh, make it more beautiful. Um, but I would say maybe two to three events per month. 
you know, not, not thinking to be invasive because we have kids. We don't want to have people invading, you know, where we live. So how long is it going to take you to improve the property for you to even use uh, it? Based on my estimate, about uh, four to six months. And what all will that uh, improvement and enhancement consist of? We want to place a gate in the property. We want to um, install <coughs> gravel. We would like to have asphalt installed in the entrance of the property. One of the ideas of my wife was to um, buy or build a train, you know, a small train for kids. So, because the property has, a, as you can see in the picture, it has an entrance, it looks like a loop, mm -hmm. and, and just kind of give that experience of, you know, they then seeing the animals, the sheep, and playing with them, and then just go around like that. Um, you know, that's pretty much it. Our house has to be painted, so we will have to paint it. You know, there are certain things that takes time to get it done. Are you going to do this work yourself or contract it out? Uh, part of myself, part of a friend of mine's, part contracting people out. You know? And you think you can get that done in six months, doing yeah. it yourself and working? Yes, 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 weekends. Okay. You know, like I said, I work from home. Um, but it's just a rough estimate. I, I can't really <coughs> tell you anything. I, it sounds like you're trying to turn it into like one of those little pumpkin patch places where they kids go and go through a maze and have activities and... It's kind of what it sounds like is that well my wife mentioned that because she saw that and she she thought about you know we don't have any experience with this to be honest with you my 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 work is totally different but it's just creating an experience for kids that's all and why kids again because we live in the property we don't want to have night events in the property or anything like that i just know that those pumpkin patch they bring in hundreds of people mm -hmm. because it's a children venue of which we don't have anything for children so it sounds to me like it's not going to be 50 people we're going to be anticipating far more than that which could lead to more income and not even have to do your other jobs i mean they they do i'm just anticipating more than 50 people in a road that can't facilitate what we have now from the, if you guys remember anything about Beach Grove and zoning, um, is located directly across the street from a large amount of land that the Watersons own. Um, the Watersons, it's still, it, I'm sorry, I, I can answer a lot of y'all's questions. I live on Norton Branch. I can answer a lot of y'all's questions if y'all would give me just a few minutes to yeah. talk, if that's okay. Um, y'all were talking about the bridges. If you'll look at the map, if you wouldn't mind coming in, I'm sorry. If you'll look almost uh, about halfway on the road of his property where the road kind of bumps up, that is a one lane bridge. When I say one lane, I drive a Ford 500 little four door car. If someone's coming, you cannot get two cars across that. You might get two ATVs if you're lucky. Um, the property across the road is owned by the Coons or Ellen Ellen L. Brothers, I believe is what it is. They have a lot of Texas Longhorns, Angus, um, Highland cows. They farm for a living. They own almost all of that on that side of that road. <coughs> so there's big tractor trailers for farming. They're through there all the time with tractors and stuff like that. And, you know, we're growing. Beach Grove is growing just like a lot of Coffee County. So our road, and I have pictures, we have parts where our road is sinking, where our road is flaking, and they're having to come out there once every two three months to fill in potholes because more people out here which we're happy to see a lot of them but more people out there more traffic on the road the road starts to deteriorate because we don't have a regular asphalt road they have the gravel that they spray that's how they paved north branch last time uh geez almost 10 years ago so that road is breaking down very slowly we have a lot of curves um, there is a good amount of livestock on that road, a lot of farmers, so you're going to have more than just the coons. Um, the Watersons do too. They come through there a lot. Danny Brown, he lives on Norton Branch. He has road, he, um, land, he, um, oh my goodness. He cuts and bales hay on the end of the road at Norton Branch, where, right where that bridge is. His tractor is up and down through there numerous times a day. Um, we do have speed limit signs. A lot of people don't pay attention to those signs. 
So the road is definitely a big problem. Also, if you look at his parcel, um, just to give you a little FYI, where the green, really dark green is, is basically a really big hillside. The house is built into the hillside. So he's only really got maybe, maybe two acres of that, of kind of flat land where you could park. If, you know, I really don't see getting 17 cars on that property and being able to do anything. And the creek is right at the front of his property. So you talked about if children do get in the creek and other stuff, then you've got maybe pollution and EPA problems. And that creek does cross and goes onto the farm lane across the road, which their livestock lives off of. And going back to my point real quick, because Karen yes. is fantastic, but but my point was that that there are there is other land there that uh, the, the Watersons had wanted to sell. There's other land there that is for sale. And so our concern as a community is that right now we're talking three to six acres, you know, of this land. <coughs> but something like this, like you had mentioned, it could bring in a lot of people. And so if additional land becomes available right there and they decide to purchase it, um, you know, then this could be a much larger project than what we're talking at currently. And so that was my point. And yes, I, I agree. With so in your opinion, the road right now does really doesn't, need to facilitate any more traffic it's handling all it, that it can handle it, right now and you're talking about danny brown lives up at the top so now yes, he people the people are right. using what i call paul harold up on top you can come from the deerfield area down through norton's branch and come into beach grove right. upper yes, part upper uh, part lower part yes uh, and we've seen a lot more and, of that lately so yeah and you're going to you're going to have more and more traffic yeah, and, that's, and, and that's fine. If Benton closes that down, it'll take a month to put a new C box in, even if they pre build it. So that means everybody's got to go up the other side. I like your idea. I really do. I just think it's the wrong place uh, and not enough room. That's 10. Can I just make a motion that <clears throat> we're not supposed to say table this because that means mm -hmm. it goes away? That we recommend to review this again at our next meeting so that we'll have. Kurt and Dennis here because Kurt is more familiar with this. He normally gives us some type of recommendation because he has reviewed it. And because he's not here, we don't have his advice to go by. And I think that we would be a little bit premature at this point. Sure. Yeah. I'd like to add, you know, it's just a, a thought. Right. Uh, that fear maybe of, because I'm new, I just bought this property a year ago. So maybe uh, losing what we already have because I, I feel part of the of the community. Um, maybe something like this, and truly from my heart, my intention is just to maintain what I'm telling you now. You know, we are going to, we're talking about something strange that could happen in the future, but let's not go over that. Let's just keep in mind or, or keep pressing what I'm, my idea is. Maybe this will bring the benefit of the city doing something for the road, maybe widen it up, maybe taking care of the area. I don't know. I'm just thinking of that. Our condition is that once we approve this, it's done. We can't go back mm -hmm. easily and read. Take it away. Right. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to be premature <clears throat> on an idea, which is a great idea, without us having further information. Right. Because you're saying 50 people, and we're saying, and you're just saying 50, and we're saying it can't even handle 50, according to someone that's already on those roads. Right. So. And I'll second your motion, but I'd also like to counsel you two a little bit. You might want to look into, there is a, a farm petting entity in Murfreesboro that had young children come to the farm, and that young child took home, and I can't remember the name of the bacteria from a goat, and gave it to the little sibling, and the little sibling passed away. So you might want to research into how much your insurance is going to be to cover because if you're not covered by insurance right. and, and animals do carry diseases, I raise them, uh, you could be teetotally liable for that. And I don't know what kind of insurance there is to cover you on that and it may be so expensive, but I do know that place in Murfreesboro had a young child come on and that child took it home to his sibling and that child passed away from that. Sure. So, and that was in the past two years well, down there. Uh -huh. Beatty, that Beatty's farm. I don't remember which one it was, but it was a petting zoo. And the child. Lucky, 
Okay, and they yeah. took it home. They took it home. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, my name is Nicholas Northcutt, and I'm actually a, a neighbor just right down the street. Uh, my address is 214 Heady Hill, but it's it's North Branch. It's like that long driveway. Um, to answer your question that you were asking about, um, I have spoken with Kurt on this. I'm a land surveyor, so I work with Kurt on a daily basis and have gone over kind of extensively like what would be required for this particular development. I was actually the, the surveyor that surveyed this property, so I'm very familiar with the land, I'm familiar with the buildings. Before you purchased it, it was for sale. I actually toured the place before it was fixed up nice like you've got it now. But, um, but uh, what I can say is that I have spoken with Kurt about those requirements and that's why, uh, or that's what I feel like is the danger in allowing the special exception because just from my personal knowledge of the property, I can tell you that this will have to be a fully set of engineered plans. That means topo, that means paved parking to meet the requirement of the building and I'm not sure that the building itself will actually meet building codes Plus your septic fill lines have to be out there somewhere. You know, you're gonna have to work around that, make sure there's enough for primary and duplicate. Also, Norton Branch is a blue line stream, so there's buffers that have to be in place around those streams as per site plan requirements. You know, um, this is what I do. So, you know, to me, it's an interesting puzzle and I'll try every way I could do to make it work, but just my gut reaction as to the amount of space that you have there is probably not doable to make it meet all of the codes. And the danger I feel like in allowing the exception is that clearly you have good intentions and what you wanna do is a great idea and nobody minds your idea, but you could turn around and sell it tomorrow to somebody that'll have adult parties there and there will be alcohol or they and could do concerts or they could do weddings exactly. or they could do whatever they wanted once that exception was granted. So without knowing if it's even possible I would feel that it probably isn't possible. I feel like it would be dangerous to grant the exception not knowing whether or not it's even doable. And what all these folks are saying about the road is exactly right. There's goofballs that fly through there on the way to Lakewood and and <laughs> I've been run off my own road by folks. And um, anyway, um, another concern would maybe be like spillover parking or something somebody had to park in the road or something like that I mean that would be a disaster the mm -hmm. bridge you can see the stream that crosses under the street right at his driveway and it is a one-lane bridge that just had to be patched because there's a massive hole in it like and, uh, I don't know if y'all know you know about how funding and stuff like that works but even if they decide they want to fix this bridge and they start the surveying process I mean it takes years yeah. to get the funding in place to to do those type of projects when I first moved to the road, it's been 15 years ago, uh, it was gravel. I mean, it hadn't been tar and chip, but you know, less than 15 years, I think it's been 13 years it's been tar and chip. And, uh, and it is just one and a half lane wide. But, um, but that being said, uh, you know, I hope it doesn't get us off on the wrong foot. I think it was a great idea, but it, I don't think this is a great location for it. He Excuse just kind me. of summarized what we were already thinking that I really wanted Kurt's opinion. So, um, are you related to Max? Okay, I mean, if you guys don't know, Northcutt is one of the most respected surveyors in this town. So, I see that one of the biggest fears is the parking, right? Um, I mean, I mean, there's more to it than just right, the parking. Right, A lot more to I it. I just want to get away, get you know, take away the parking uh, concern, and um, I mean, you guys are welcome to see. But no having your own party is design. different than it going somewhat commercial and us giving you a zoning permit for that because Mr. Northcutt has already said mm -hmm. in his observation that that could be an issue because you're changing from being a resident to being somewhat commercial. Right. Correct? Mm -hmm. I'm so, not sure what the parking requirements would be, whether it's based off the square footage of the building or whether it's based off the amount of occupants that the building can hold. But like, I mean, I know 
home because I've had gatherings at my house, and yeah, you can cram a bunch of cars in an area, but if you're going to actually meet site plan requirements, you know, those spaces have to be a minimum of 9 by 18 foot wide on a paved parking lot, you know, like I said, detention, there's a whole lot that would have to be met to make it a, like a legitimate business. Right. And then once it's a legitimate business, you could sell it to whomever you right. wanted after that point to do whatever they wanted with it at that point. And your septic is maybe going to have to be enlarged, and that may take up part of the parking that you think you're going to have, you know, because you don't want to have parking on top of your field lines and that type right. of thing. Um, yeah, septic tank is in a different spot, but I understand. I right. understand your point. Thank you all. Probably. Thank you. So we have a second. So we, is, is to table it? No, to move it. To next meeting. Next so meeting. Kirk can be yeah. here. So, so uh, you can help me, but I think the law says we have to deal with it in a certain number of days. <laughs> so it can't be the next, it can't be just the next meeting. It has to be, we'll have to be a special call meeting. Yes. If no, there's not. It's, it's got to be done within, th was it 30 days? That's what I was thinking. Okay. So when's our next meeting? It, well, it, it would have you'd have to, have to reschedule, happen. yeah. It's, just, I mean, we have our monthly meeting that could be scheduled. What about this? If I race in my second mm -hmm. and, and redo the motion? Uh huh. Because if it's, if it's not, best I remember in our training a couple of years ago, that it automatically yeah. goes as a past yeah. okay. issue. Yeah, and for not dealing with it. We don't want to pass it well, at this point. I, I'm just saying, but we have to do something. Mm -hmm. We have to vote on it within 30 days after being presented by it. Okay. So if I rest in my second, her motion would fail. That's correct. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. But I can make another motion. So, so I guess the first thing, just try to get things in order here. I believe this committee has the authority to approve it, mm -hmm. and it's out of Section 4.041, and it's under conditional uses, number 11, private recreational facilities, and other than those are specifically permitted. So I think we have the authority I'm not trying to say we approve it. I'm just saying that mm -hmm. this is something I think needs to come before us yes. that we have to deal with. This is not a current issue or anybody yeah. else. We need to deal with it. Yeah, now, right. when we, we deal more. with it is, you yeah. know, I, I just want to make sure everybody's. Okay. Kevin, a key word there, uh, you refer to private. Yeah. And I, I think this would be much more than private. Yeah, well, it also public recreation facilities, okay. but, you know, okay. public recreation facilities, I think, are parks and things mm -hmm. like that. But we, the definition, we can look it's it in up. There. We did this before where we had someone that had come to us and we said that we needed additional information and we gave him a deadline to come back to us. And at that point, we met 30 days after that. It had to do with the Lakewood. Yeah, and, I remember, I remember and he that didn't, sewer. Uh, right. Uh, uh, of whether or not the property would even park for it before we we didn't want to permit something that we didn't even know would even park. Are there restrooms in that building? Anyway. Are there restrooms in the building? Uh, they're not. Will there be restrooms no, put in? Our idea was to use um, portable bathrooms. Okay. And I don't know with 50 people. Yeah. On a permanent business, you can do that. My, it's my yeah. max because okay. I don't want to deal with more than that. But I if understand. you were to say 30, 25, mm. I should be fine. Mm. That's a zone, I mean, not just a zoning, but that's also a permit thing as far as the um, porta potties being out there for commercial use. So, so once again, I, I mean, just to kind of understand my experience on here, we can tell him to have the whole thing completely designed according to what Mr. Northcutt says and spend thousands and thousands of dollars to have something done, just yeah. wait, yeah. wait. Yeah. And then he comes back here and we say, no, you can't mm -hmm. do it. Exactly. And he just wasted. So, I mean, I, I'm, I I'm not trying to say I'm on yeah. one side or the other. I'm just trying to make sure everybody so understands what's at stake here in doing this. Can I leave one more thing, please? Yep. <laughs> so the other thing is part of when we do a conditional use or special exemption, we have to go to which Dennis calls the criteria for review, and I'll just read the first one, which I think probably applies here, which would be a judgment call by the committee. So it says, prior to the issuance of a special exemption, the board shall make written findings certifying that satisfactory provisions and arrangements have been made concerning all of the falling applicable. So that, I think, does task him to do some things, you know, I mean, not maybe mm -hmm. to the level of full design. 
But the first one, which I think, which has been brought up by everyone here, it says ingress and egress to property and proposed structures therein with particular reference to automotive and pedestrian safety and convenience, traffic flow and control and access in case of fire or catastrophe. So Lacking. He, it's Lacking. on his part to tell this board and make us as a board feel comfortable that he admit that. And there's six other ones you mm -hmm. know, that we can go down there. But that one seems to be the most applicable to what he's, what you've all been mm -hmm. discussing. So can we deny it at this time and he still come back at a later date and ask for, is there any provision for that? I mean, because then at that point he could maybe do some due diligence that didn't cost him a whole lot of money. Well, he, I mean, just for example, Ben could come out and make it a four lane highway and then he could come back and say, hey, the road's been fixed. The issue why you turned it down has been repaired exactly. and fixed. The bridge has been made or yep. whatever. All those know. conditions have been satisfied. The, the condition, yeah, but so uh, it's, it's kind of what, that's more of the judgment call, but I think we have the correct information here about how you would judge whether this is acceptable or not. And, uh, what are we going to do with the motion in a second? That we my motion's dead. He yeah. didn't yes. second it. I rescinded. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, he okay. rescinded it. So okay. my motion is dead. So it'd have to be another motion to either approve or deny. So, so if you want, I'll read the other ones just for everybody's interest. You know, um, there, you know that there are any issues with these things, too. Uh, economic noise, vibrations, glare, or odor effects of special exemptions on or by adjoining properties and properties generally in or near the district. You know, that's the issue with Bonnaroo was from, mm -hmm. you probably remember the board. I mean, <laughs> people were affected by that in a negative way, you know, so. Mm -hmm. um, refuge and service areas, whether they can handle that with particular reference to all those items above. Utilities with reference to locations available at incompatibility. So, you know, that might be kind of what Mr. Northcutt's saying, you know, can you really have septic system that can handle this? Uh, and uh, screening and buffering, if there was an issue with whatever he was doing there was, you know, a problem for the neighbors. And then uh, that there's required yard and other open space, which is another one that has been brought up, I think, amongst everybody and general compatibility with properties and other property in the district, you know. So anyway, those, if it was to be approved, the board would have to say we feel comfortable that all seven of these things are being met by the information that he has been able to provide, you know. So that's, that, that, and so like I said, I'm not trying to say what the board do, I just want to say this is what I think it should be judged on. Exactly. Mr. Chairman, uh, in our, Earlier meetings, we've had to, whether we accept or decline, don't we have to make an, a motion to accept it, to approve it, and then when we get a no vote? Yeah, then we have to do it again. Then we have to do a vote decline. Yeah, yeah. And that's the correct way, yeah. legal way for us to do that. Okay, so we're going to make a motion to approve, and then we'll vote. Then if you get a no, then we'll make another motion to decline. Correct. As I read it. Okay. Correct. Based okay. on certain criteria ba and, yeah. and announce exactly. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and like I said, you know, if the board doesn't feel that he has addressed these seven issues, because it's on him, mm -hmm. not Kurt or you or me yes. else, to prove that okay. he has handled this, if everybody okay. understands. I do. Yeah. Thank but, you. Yeah. You good? Mm hmm I'm good. Yeah. You good, Mr. Moore? I understand. Yeah. Well, I'll make the motion to approve it. Okay. For, uh, um, for criteria that it has been brought before the board. Um. You need a second, or we just don't answer. Yeah, no, so it fails for a, a lack of a second. Yeah, but, well, could you also include that? Just you know that it it is according to yes, four point zero because you know Sam is big on that that we say what part of the resolution we feel uh, apply. that it. Is yes, and uh, it is one of our items that we can be approved if they meet all the criteria, <laughs> and it is on Article. It's four point zero four one, and it's C conditional uses eleven. Yes, that's that's what I so. And, and we're supposed to always have that in our motion mm -hmm. that 
the reason we feel that we're dealing with it. Yeah. Okay. So do we have a second? Okay, we don't have any second. So do I have a motion, motion to disapprove? Motion to disapprove. Okay, motion to disapprove. Second. Second. Any further discussion? And that is based upon the failing to meet the criteria of 4.041. That, that we feel comfortable that he's met yes. those, all that criteria. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, so, and that doesn't keep him from not yeah, coming, coming back. back. That's right. So. And we need to say what we, if they, we do vote, the motion to decline it was for the same uh, 4.1041. 4.041. 4.041. That number. And uh, item. C eleven. I, don't, yeah. I, I am. Who's taking minutes? Lowell. Okay, he knows. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cindy, you're with me, aren't you? Okay. So, so, and I think probably also we include a motion that you know it's according to the procedures for s special exemptions. It's ten point six zero C, and it's criteria for review. Mm -hmm that we do not feel that he's, he's, met, he's met that sufficiently for okay. we're comfortable to approve. Is that everybody got that? that yes, clear? sir. You good with that, Cindy, too? You got enough? Okay. All uh, in favor of declining it, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, pass 5-0. So that's basically, you know, Kirk can give you this part or Cindy and explain you the additional information we would need to feel comfortable about doing that. Sure. And then you may go talk to Benton, and he says, I'm going to make that road to two lanes. That would be my next know. question. Whether it happens or not, um, how can we make this road better? Because I have my kids playing mm -hmm. in the area. I see other families walking, and cars are speeding 70 miles in there. And it's just uh, very concerning. That's your motion to go Rural Road and Bridge would be the yeah. committee to I, start I would with. Start, you know, I would start with the road commissioner. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's I'm going to ask him whoever's yeah. road commissioner. Yeah. Does he know who's in the audience live in the uh, area? <laughs> well, okay. uh, certainly, uh, in my recommendation, would be that y'all as a group. group together and ask for a meeting with you. You've got a road commissioner and also Mr. Bartlett, mm -hmm. our road superintendent, mm -hmm. and share with him your concerns. Yeah. And you've been included in that. Mm -hmm. That's where I would begin. The only, the only concern with that road being widened, I mean, I would love for it to be widened, but as we know, that'd be safer, it'd be a lot easier, is about the first third, maybe almost two thirds of that road, is, yeah, on from about his property toward the end, the creek runs right alongside it. Mm -hmm. Then the other side is straight hillside. And then when you have a massive hill almost to my house, it's straight hillside, straight down. And we've had numerous people go straight mm. down there. So it's almost impossible to widen that to a two lane, at least in those areas. Now in between, you probably could, but my opinion is it would be impossible to make it a two lane. So 100 years ago, it was probably a wagon road. It yeah. was. Yeah. It I mean, was, and I'm not saying that, I'm not being, it. yeah, I, I'm not <laughs> saying that's part. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very, I mean, it's been widened, and that's just, I think that's why it would be possible. No. That It'd cost a half a million dollars to put one in there. Yeah. No, probably more than that. Probably cost a million <laughs> now with the study. Can I speak directly, Mr. Simmons? Yes. Um, I, I'm the one that puts together all of the events for the community and things like that. We all would welcome your family to, to attend those community events, get to know the other families around because we all want to make the area better and we want to make improvements to it as a community and as together. And so I just want to welcome you to the community Thank you. And, and let you know that just because we're against this particular thing, it doesn't mean that we um, don't love the idea or don't want you to feel involved and included into the area. Exactly. It's not personal at all. Good. And I got to be sure. honest, um, I kind of felt it that way based on the comments that you already know about the Facebook. Um, I, that kind of pushed me And that's why I wanted to say that publicly, because 
I wanted yeah. you to know that from, from myself and from a majority of the people in the community that are active, we are all very welcoming and, and we're glad that you're part of our community and, and part of our neighbors. And we've got a few, we've got, everybody's got a few veterans, but majority of Beach Grove is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, thank, well, you. thank you. Thank you all thank for you. coming. I appreciate your participation because it helps us too. So all feel free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's an exit, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's why you're in charge. I don't know if I helped. Uh, oh, no, it was a big help. It was just, a big help. Uh, my only thing is, and of course Lowell's been on as long as I have, is you know, kind of we've kind of heard a lot of this stuff a bunch before, you know, and I could have, you know, like, well, how things can possibly happen because something you do, like, you know, we know from training, doesn't matter. My, my land values go down, doesn't matter. You know, right. you can't prove it. Yeah, there's, right. there's all those things, the but thing but we do have some guidelines, guidelines that mm -hmm. help us Rules, that's right. to keep us in <laughs> this. So I was going to fill in for Dennis because the lady said, you know, you can't build a road there. I think Dennis even, quoting Dennis was, is there's no place you can't build a road anymore, right? <laughs> because we have the right this, equipment. This, this was a good discussion. <laughs> and that was, was a good discussion. It was not 30 days, it's 60 days. It's 60 I days, it, okay. I found it in here. Good, thank you. So, but thank even you. at that, it still didn't the, follow the guidelines. The criteria didn't. Uh, I understand that. Right. But yeah. I'm just saying, no, it, well, if we do postpone something, yeah. we have to have a vote, yes or no, 60 days. within 60 days, of if the, not of the first motion or it, and a lot of times or it passes need, need but three or four times a year mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. but yeah. if but monthly uh, if needed we can meet yeah so. okay okay well, let's go on to the next uh, item on the agenda it's a special exemption request for a cemetery in an rs1 zone mcminnville highway forest mill cemetery map 059 parcel 8201 is that you got that up there? Oh, you already got up there. Great. Okay. Now, is this? Are they wanting to add to the cemetery? Uh, oh, who's you're going to? Okay, thank you. So, when you come up here and state your name, okay. I'm John Yates. I'm a trustee with the cemetery. Okay. okay. And this is James Foot. Maybe he can add some stuff to that. He's actually treasurer. Okay. Well, about uh, eight to ten months ago, we was talking about possibly adding. Side of what we have now because you know we had heard that there was other communities and cemeteries in the area that was getting full sure, yeah. and they was landlocked wasn't mm -hmm. going to be able to buy any more land or purchase any more land so uh, we actually uh, found out who was the owner of the land behind the cemetery on the west side John uh, east side this would be on the back side of what we have now, back towards the railroad tracks. Oh, okay. Back there. Yeah. Kind uh, of the north, northern, northwest side. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Right okay. There. But at any rate, behind. Yeah. Right. We, you, of course, what yeah, we right. have now actually is all road frontage, but this would be back behind, behind that. that. Yeah. But uh, we, I contacted the gentleman that owns the property, and he lives out of state, so it wasn't an easy thing to go back and forth but uh, we had somebody come forward and, and say that they would fund this purchase through a private donation hmm. so we, we went forward and uh, had a surveyor to come out and survey what we was talking about as far as the additions it's amounted to about nine tenths of an acre added to what we have now and we went and had a, took the surveyor's information lawyer and he actually drew up the deed in his office with the information that we had from the surveyor. <coughs> now when James went to the uh, register of deeds, they said you're going to have to get approval from the planning commission for the county and the city. The county and the city? And the city, which seems you know, hmm. kind of crazy to me as far as it is, but they have a map in their office up there with their urban Growth, 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 yeah. It includes this cemetery. It goes to the cemetery, and then it stops. So that's uh, kind of why we're here today with the approval for what we're asking. So you're just adding on nine tenths of an acre like that little spot uh, like that. 
Now that may already be added on there okay. because there was actually a, a bend in it at a certain place and we've added enough just okay. to make it straight on the back side. Yes, sir. So still in that same vicinity yeah. though. Right. It's just attached to what was already there as a cemetery. Right. Okay. Right. So you were told to come to us first and not go to UBA then? Well, we couldn't actually get everything together. We were going Is this to existing there road, John? Uh, let's see. Probably. Is, isn't that yeah. Short, yeah. short yeah. building? This is the road right yeah. here. Okay. See, yeah. actually, the, the land uh, come here and then kind of come back there and make that. Like a offset. Yeah. So now we're just coming back here and adding 75 feet Square this way, up. 100 feet this way, mm -hmm. so it's a 25 foot offset. Yeah. So it'll just be a straight shot. Where's the fire hall at? Where's to the right in that building. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're not going to take, if they had to buy land, they could still go back. Yes. Sir. And they'd have more road frontage on both sides. Right. Okay. Did you have to do any environmental studies on that for it to be a cemetery? I'm just. That's kind of a... <coughs> well, we're talking about a cemetery that was... Yeah. Uh, from 1800 and something. But I didn't know if new new restrictions made you do a do an environmental... Yeah, it's not, I'm just curious. That came you know, up once before. Cemeteries kind of have exceptions somehow or another. You know, this is... Have you found any criteria in there? Like yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Oh, would you? No, I mean... This is an RS1 zone, and cemeteries are a spe special exception mm. use in RS1 zone. So that extra land that they were adding, they have to get permission okay. from you guys to do that. The survey being in the UGB has to go to Manchester Planning okay. Commission. Okay. But, but, but we can committed. grant him, if I make the motion to grant him the exception right now, it is what, what number do I need to put down? Oh. I, can, I can give it to you. So okay. Do we want to hear this first? Four. Four four point zero four five uses permitted a special exemption, and it's number eighteen. It's cemeteries, uh, uh, mausoleums, and column columbariums or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And those are there. And the same criteria is what I read before when we were discussing. Yeah. There, it's the same seven criteria you know, about access and whether there's any problem with the neighbor with noise or utilities screen, which. And this one doesn't seem to be because all his access is already yes. established from the yeah. highway there. Yes. So it seems like there's it would meet all the criteria of C there. But, you know. James, anything you want to add? Or? Uh, no, it's just uh, coincidentally the guy we bought it from, his mother was the shield, his name was his grandpa, and grandmother was established, established the cemetery of uh, wow. the first one. Awesome. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we'd actually been after him probably 10 years mm -hmm. to sell us some. But we didn't want to be greedy and we didn't want to lie yes. because mm -hmm. we wanted to grow the cemetery yes, sir. in the future because as the community grows, we're going to need more, more space for, mm -hmm. for burial. Mm -hmm. Well, I make the motion we grant him the exception of okay. eight, number 18 okay. on that. Okay. I'll second. I'll make this a uh, little second here. Okay. Discussion? Yes. Is there anything else that we need to know? It has met the criteria that you previously read off. Yeah, the ones I previously yeah. read, there's no other additional criteria. Okay, so 4.045, is that what we need to reference? 4.045 C 18. 18. 18. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. approved. That's what Tim said. Second and that's motion. why I'm second it. Okay. okay. Third four. In a, in a few days, it won't be ready tonight. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's right. Oh, no, <laughs> so, just curiosity, how many more plots, plots will you be able right. to get out of that almost acre? Uh, about 600 acres. 600 an acre? 600 wow. plots? 600 an acres? 600 an acre. per acre you can do. Yeah, well, and we that's. Got, we got 2.1, and we got 1,200. Well, that's going to take care of you guys for a long time. Well, yeah. We hope. We hope. Yeah. I don't want to get in there too quick. <laughs> yeah, well, do you, live, do you live out there? No, ma'am. Oh. It is a, 
I, I'm all over this county, and it is a very well. I, y'all, yes. um, a young man who played baseball is buried out there. A high school kid whose name's on the sign at the baseball field is buried there. Oh, Dusty Eel? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't is know. Is Dusty not, not buried there? Uh, no, Dusty's at Shady Grove. Okay, yes. wrong one. There's some. Okay, Scott, well, y'all take very good care of it. Hansel. Okay, Hansel. okay. Hansel. okay. Hansel. okay. Hansel. All right, that's who's. I just know that we go out okay. there for and it, it across is, America. And it is very well taken care of. And I'm very fortunate, of course. You know, it's run through donations. Yes, sir. And we're very fortunate. Yes, sir. That people that donate. Mm -hmm. That's good. Is that where Vernon's very? Yeah. So it, was the cemetery associated with any church at any time? Out there, or was there always a no, it always always mail. Mail. It was always it was, on its own. It was donated to the community by the Shields family, family in 1945. Wow. Okay. Okay. And uh, we growed it some with a part of the land that the same family donated for the school when the school was there. Uh, okay. Right. So we, that's how we acquired part of that back. So we kind of expanded a little bit then, and then now we got opportunity. We hate to miss the opportunity. Yes. Right. You'll never get another no, chance. Not come back again. Yeah. Okay. Now that's good. I mean, you've got room well, like for basically twelve hundred blocks. Oh yeah. Side, you know, that's good. You don't know what oh yeah. Going to bring yeah. Here. But as the community grows, obviously with all this other development up the road, it will. Uh, we're going to need either more cemeteries or grow some cemeteries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or more mausoleums. Okay. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. all okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, passes five zero. Thank you for coming mm -hmm. and just. Yeah. Thank you for y'all's work. Thank you. Thank you that you do such a good job out there. Mm -hmm. That was easy. Yeah. And it's good seeing you again, Sean. Yeah, you too. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. One more. <laughs> okay, the next thing on the agenda is a special exception request for a customary home occupation in an A1 zone on Taylor Road. Map 66, parcel 1501. Okay. And uh, could you tell us uh, a little bit about Which what your it? customary home occupation is? Like, is it a I doctor's mean, office, a beautician, or what is it? I'm wanting to start an online educational uh, business okay. and, and use part of my home for my computer, my computer desk, and some filing cabinets. What kind of business again? Online. Online. Um, I'm thinking about. I'm wanting, thinking about getting it together. But I'm going to start out with some online tutoring, mm -hmm. uh, and I'd like to maybe get some educational resources together and possibly sell online. And those are my. Oh, what I'm thinking about at this moment. So, so you won't have any traffic coming no. to your house. I won't have. Like Amazon Inter interface with your customers. Well, will you have? Uh, will you be selling, needing trucks to come to your house to drop stuff off so you can reship them out? Where I'm at is kind of. Like uh, no, like right now, I'm thinking if it got that big, I would want a place away from my home. I understand. But that. I would have delivery, like you know, UPS or. But it wouldn't be major trucks. No. no. Okay. So you're this 15.1. Parcel or yes, <clears throat> just highlighted it right there. And the mm -hmm. house is right there, and there's your road right there. And there's a couple okay. of storage buildings behind me. Uh, are there any other businesses out there? Just curious. That's no, residential. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. There was a junkyard the out there somewhere, isn't it? Used to be. Oh, oh Mitch and here, here, it's not on that road. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming nobody's opposing. You don't have anybody out here to say anything about it. Who so. wants land around them? Who owns the, because the driveway would be on their side. Who owns the 1503? The Wintons. Oh, okay. Yeah, High school. The barn of it. Yeah, it's and I said terrible to all of the people around. Okay, that's Two fine. Two women cows. Oh. Ask yeah. a Winton. Yeah. What well, size? Yeah, we need to parcel? see where the where the rings have been. What size is that parcel? Uh, it says. What's your acreage? Um, two point three. Okay. It's it's right up there on the right hand side. Right. 
2.03. You're like me. I've got Lots the blind. Well, I can see that. It's I better to ask for me to ask a question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm with you now. Under the bridge, over the creek, I don't think anybody would know. Okay. How yeah. long have you been there? Really say that on there. I was just wondering. Not that it matters. I just wondered. <laughs> Have you already commenced this exercise? No, I, I wanted to go through this before I kind of started anything else. You know, so. so you're going to be. I'm kind of confused on. I'm and maybe <laughs> maybe it's not hard to confuse me sometimes, but you're going to be online tutoring people. Correct, mm -hmm. and you're going to be selling merchandise in the future. In the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is kind of like a home home business. business, and so how often does that come before the board for you to have an approval? It's it's, it's it has. We, we've done it before. You you mean like a hairdresser? Yeah. A, a yeah. Daycare. A gun. Yeah. Uh, yeah gun. Gun. gun selling guns. It's. it's I, actually, you know, when Bed you get and a, breakfast. If, when you get yeah. a motion, I'll read that there are more requirements than okay. the other seven. Yeah. So, and I just want to make sure you were aware of them too. And whether they, did, whether they've given you these requirements mm -hmm. in addition about signage or something. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. And you can only have one other person work there that's not in your family. You, you mean you know? But I'll, I'll read it for you all so you guys too. Yeah. So can so we, we get pretty restrictive. Can we yeah. read that before we make a motion? Yeah, or you got to make yes. a motion first. Well, I, I can if, if you want. I can read it now yeah, if you yeah. want to. You can put up more of my reading. I like it. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I think this is once again one that we have the authority to approve, and it's in Ag One, you know, A One, four zero four point zero four one conditional use and it's called customary incidental home occupation with a principal building as regulated in article 3 section 3.020 which are the additional requirements that apply to this beyond the other seven so i'll read what what a customary incidental home occupation is a customary incidental home occupation is a gainful occupation or profession including the professional office of an architect, artist, dentist, engineer, lawyer, physician, and the like, barber, beauty, and tailor shops, conducted by members of a family residing on the premises or only one other person in addition to those persons residing therein and conducted entirely within the principal dwelling unit or in the permitted accessory structure. In connection with a home occupation, no stock in trade shall be displayed outside the dwelling and no alterations to any building shall indicate from the exterior that the building is being utilized in whole or in part for any purpose other than a residential unit, including permitted accessory buildings and announcement sign of not more than four square feet in the areas permitted. Once this, this is really kind of interesting, this part I thought was interesting. Once a specific home occupation is granted as a special exception for a particular parcel, it cannot be changed to another use. So she couldn't go into another business and try to do it. It has to be for this specific one. If there is a change in ownership of the parcel conducting the incidental home occupation, the special exemption allowing that specific occupation for the parcel shall cease. Oh. Which I did not know. Yeah. I thought Sam told us what we did things. That was it. But yeah. this particular one, it's over. It's you know, you can Somebody, if a new owner came in, they want to do the same thing. They'd have to come, have to come back to us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when questions arise regarding the legality of a specific home occupations, the Board of Zoning Appeals should determine whether said home occupation is in compliance with the district in which said home occupation is located. However, activities such as dancing instruction, band instrument instruction, tea rooms, bed and breakfast establishments, real estate offices, convalescent homes, mortuaries, animal clinics, retail sales business, or any other activity deemed by the board to be incompatible with a district, which was the agricultural district, or a potential nuisance to the surrounding area should not constitute an acceptable home occupation. So, but she said she's going to have a retail business, though. Yeah, uh, which one is, 
you, well, I just heard the word retail, and I know she's going to have resale. So resale mm -hmm. is retail. Yeah, we're, we're, I, oh, re, re, no, real estate offices. Keep going. I heard real retail. Convalescent homes, mortuaries, animal clicks, a retail sales business. She's going to be online, but it's still retail. Well, yes. but it's it's other it's though that that's the board of examiners shall determine okay. is in compliance with the district, you know, in there, and it says so. If it's compliant, if we feel like it's compliant yeah, to the if, district, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. it's a we yeah. we're okay. But now if, it gives us a chance to kick it out yeah. versus keep it. Right. It gives us a door, is what that does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And we just have to use our good. Mr. Chairman, I move this be approved. Okay, motion to approve. I'll second that. Seconded by Mr. Morton. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, so approved. And thank you for coming and yes, saying that. Good. I hope you do well with that. We need more education. Awesome. Don't y'all just love me being here asking all these questions? No, it keeps no, us on our toes. Absolutely. <laughs> it's good. It, 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 good question. Really, no, it's good. You really need that. Yeah, it's because sometimes if you don't, if you hadn't have said that, do we need to table this? Yes. Yeah. It wouldn't have triggered me to say, well, sure, go on. You know, yeah. we got to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, and yeah. it's. The buck's got to stop somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And you haven't been to the good ones yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> so what? We killed them. All right. Well, we had we had, we had to get turned off. Yeah, we got to turn this. Yeah. Um, um, any other business? Yeah, are we adjourned? Yeah. yeah we any motion to adjourn? So Make, move. Okay. Second. Everybody All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you. Was it you?